FM, the source. Seven minutes after 10 o'clock. Wow, I'm sorry we started a little bit late there. I, uh, the other day, I think it was yesterday, I was uh, paying for something, and on my $20 bill, the new money, right? The new money. Mm-hmm. It's, new money it's new to me anyway. Right across the front <laughs> says, we the people. And I, and I was thinking about that phrase, we the people, how when it was first written, um, it didn't really include everybody, you know? We just, I mean, just it wasn't until 1920 uh, that you ladies were allowed to vote on this International uh, Women's Day. Isn't that what it is, International Women's yes. Day? Yes. Uh, and, and black folks, of course, couldn't vote either when those words were written, we the people. So in a country that is supposed to be run by people who represent all the people, that wasn't the case. And so as as the years progressed, we started to amend our, mend our ways, I guess is the word, and and fix things, and I'm, and I'm wondering how we're doing now, because ultimately it is about who is making the rules, and in this country, the way those people get into those offices is by the vote, so it's an important thing to look at. Our guest is Steve Phillips. He has written the book called Brown is the New White, and uh, he's a civil rights lawyer, the founder of Democracy in Color. He's a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress and a contributor to the New York Times, and his credentials go on and on. And it's a short interview, so let me just go right to uh, Steve. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Where are you calling from? I'm in D.C. today. Oh, are you, are you a political uh, animal, as they say? <laughs> well... Yes, and I'm a, I'm a senior fellow at Center for American Progress, and they've got a great radio studio. So. Oh, nice. So, so what do you see as the landscape of America, and are, do we really have representation? Or are there some people, as they say, being disenfranchised? What do you think is happening? Yeah, no, I thought your, your opening uh, remarks were very much on point in, in, in reflecting where we're at in this country and what's happening. And so... The country was created and limited, democracy and participation was limited to white male property owners. And we've had an expansion through lots of, you know, struggle over the years, including a civil war and a civil rights movement. And that's what I talk about in my, in my book, was that from ni- in 1965, the immigration changes and the voting rights changes really opened up the U.S. to make it a much more of a multiracial democracy. The composition of the country changed from 12% people of color to almost 40% today. And that's what enabled the country to elect and re-elect Obama as president. And what I talk about in the this new edition of the book, the 2016 election, is how Trump represents a backlash to all of that progress. And that's where we are in the country now, is in this struggle around what is the definition of an American, who are we as a country, who counts as an American. And that's the very intense uh, debate and struggle we're having in America right now. But I'm wondering if it's not more about the the principles that those two men uh, represent. I, I don't know that Obama was elected because he was black, and I, and I don't know that Trump was elected because he was white. I, I think the the voter. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But you tell me what you found. I, it seems like the voters choose who they think will do the job the best. Well, it's not uh, accidental that Obama, was, that Obama was elected when he was elected in the sweep of the country's history. And I am arguing in, the, in, in, in this edition of my book, it's not accidental that Trump uh, was elected after Obama. And that really, you know, you have to remember that Trump uh, rose to prominence by attacking Obama's uh, uh, credentials and attacking his citizenship. And this whole birth certificate and birther nonsense, he was the lead, one of the lead champions of that. And he saw how powerful it was to stir up the resentment and the animosity towards Obama. And there's a lot of studies that have been quite, you know, uh, empirically sound showing that a core part of Trump's appeal was racial resentment in the country. You know, we- um, and that... The only thing is we had Ben Carson on, and Ben Carson was also speaking out against some of the policies of Obama, and Ben obviously is a, is a black man, and 
And he did pretty good. I mean, until yeah, I don't know what happened that caused him to uh, drop out of the race. But and the same thing with the ladies. I mean, we had uh, a lady uh, candidate running on the Republican side as well. So. Well, right, but even even it's a question not just of the in the, of the specific composition of the individual, but it really has to do with the composition of the country and the culture in the country in which communities and which um, leaders and, and 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 you know music and art and, and all of that playing into these notions and fears that something's being taken from people, our way of life hmm. is being threatened. And those are the things that Trump in particular was able to undermine. Uh, the book is available not only as a book, but also as an audio book. And I found it on Amazon. I know you're getting, re- you, you're getting really good reviews for the most part, but, but everything political always has somebody who's going to say something beca- against it only because it's political. So I, I, I have your, uh, you have my empathy for that one. Let me, uh, so I got to cover the book on here. Let me put your picture on the, on the podcast. So um, do you have a website so we can get the book? Yeah, so I uh, created with a great team of people, democracyincolor.com, which is where I do my writing. People can access the book through there. We have a podcast, Democracy in Color podcast. We've got people like Cory Booker and other folks on that. Um, so you can reach us all on democracyincolor.com. Do, do you think um, we are getting closer to the dream that Martin Luther King Jr. had? Well, I, I feel like that's the struggle we're having right now. And I feel that uh, Obama's election and re-election represented great progress, and that Trump's election represented a backlash. And so now we're going to see, are we going to mo- get back on the train towards moving towards equality and embracing our identity as a multiracial country? We'll see that through the midterm elections and the 2020 election. Or are we going to continue on this effort that Trump has us on of trying to roll back the progress towards us being a multiracial, diverse country. There's a part of me that agrees with you, but the part that disagrees with you is about the color of the two men. Now, you may be right. I may be wrong. Maybe we see it two different ways. But uh, as far as the policies are going, I'm agreeing with you on the policy part. But like when you listen to Ben Carson, and I have to use him because he was speaking, he was saying some of the things, the same things that Trump was saying. And in fact, he's working with Trump now. So uh, would we, if, if he had been elected, and I know it's hypothetical, but would, would you feel the same way? Or would you feel like it was more about the policies that you were opposed to, as opposed to his, well, col- it's his not the, color? It, it's not just the color of the individual proposing the policies. It's the impact of the policies on the racial composition of the country. And I wrote a piece for the New York Times a couple of weeks ago saying Trump is trying to make America white again. And so Ben Carson could have put forward those policies, too. Mm-hmm. But the very specific immigration policies Trump is trying to undo are the immigration policies that led towards America becoming a more diverse country, took down the whites-only signs at our borders. The literal definition of U.S. citizen was to be a free white person. And that was all the way up until 1952. Trump's trying to go back to that era. And so it's not just about who, what he looks like, but what he's trying to make America look like. Well, are you sure? I mean, I don't see him doing that. I, I, to me, I, I, I'm, I'm missing what, something. What did he do that makes no, no, you think the, that? The, 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 this whole notion around a wall, build a wall. He didn't say build a wall along the Canadian border. It's build a wall along the Mexican border. He shot to the top of the polls when he started demonizing Mexicans in playing to those fears and resentments. He's increased deportation only of people of color. He's not deporting people, immigrants from Norway, which is not an s-hole country that he talks about. And the specific immigration policies he's trying to undo, this family reunification, those are the policies that led towards the U.S. going from being 12% people of color to 40% people of color. And now he's taking direct, dead-on aim at those specific policies to undo that so that the country does not continue to get diverse. Okay, so, so what you're telling me is that the white illegal immigrants are being left alone and anybody who's darker than white is, is being kicked out? Yes, 
That's what that's what Trump basically said. Is we don't want people from these s hole countries. Well, and we need people more people from places like Norway. Yeah, I know that's what, what he, he said, but there. but I mean, is it is that what's happening? Are there no? Are, I'm Absolutely. just I'm just curious if that's actually a fact. Absolutely, what's happening? Okay. That, that specifically Mexican immigrants that they're trying to go after. Yeah. yeah well, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of the wall. I've never been a fan of the wall. Um, some of the policies. Well, most of the thing. A lot of things he said. Uh, you have to cringe at. Some of the policies I'm okay with, but I, I was the same way with with Obama, though. I, I I never really took sides because of the R or the D or the black or the white. I always was listening to, and I'm, I'm hoping most Americans listen to what the people are saying in office and what's actually being done. Um, so I'm going to look into this. I didn't realize that the only people being sent back to their countries were... Not white, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Um, your book is doing well, isn't it? Yeah, though we were we were you know fortunate to be on the New York Times bestseller list, and uh, the first edition came out, and the second edition is just out this week, and so we hope to repeat that. Okay, uh, Steve, thank you. The book is called Brown. I'm sorry, Brown is the new white, uh, and StevePhillips.com is your website, correct? Yes. Steve, thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. We will take a little break. We'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. We are located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. I'd like to invite you to stop by and see our new boutique area and meet our staff of professional stylists. Here at Hello, Gorgeous, we 